executive for a cosmetics company, is forced to work until 5 p.m., two days before Thanksgiving. He must flee New York City and make it to Chicago to see his family. Through a series of unfortunate events, he must join forces with a random goofball to brave the nightmare of public transportation. <laughs> hey, everyone. I'm your host, Mark Rubicaba from Mr. Air Panetta. We have a very special Thanksgiving episode for you of Clubhouse Movies Podcast. Today, we will review and discuss Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, directed by John Hughes. Two men from opposite worlds collide in a wreck after wreck after wreck of hysterical encounters, which lead them in a direction neither expected. Oh, it's funny, too. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's Kevin Bacon. <laughs> That's <what I> wrote. <laughs> Whenever I see something, I'm like, hey, it's Kevin Bacon. Out of nowhere, by the way, looking like his most 80s and his most He's douchiest. Like, like the biggest hair ever, dude. <laughs> wow, this thing's huge. Oh, this is that other thing Whoa. I was looking for. Oh, yeah. it's a fall leaf. I'll put it here. It's got an idea. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, anyway, planes, look, look trains. If you're watching this right now on YouTube, our set is adorned. I know. We should have a bunch of a... YouTube videos coming out soon for you guys. Um, yeah. A bunch of are... episodes, too, so stay tuned. Yeah, we are dropping it like it's hot. Yeah. Hot potatoes. Oh. Wait, wait. Uh, so we, or we rather <laughs> hot turkeys. Yes, yeah, so we've searched the bowels of, of movie world and yes. uh, have found the one uh, Thanksgiving movie that we decided to <laughs> take a look at. Are there more Thanksgiving movies? I feel like this is the only one I've ever heard of where it's explicitly talking about Thanksgiving. I think this is it. And even the, even this one was it just me or was it just like kind of a precursor to Home Alone. Yeah, that's like, what I said. We're just we're just I a did. little closer to this 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 family movie. I, we're gonna, I yelled "Home Alone house." And yeah, <laughs> I wrote that here too. And he also wrote, uh, "He had the same adventure as <laughs> as Kevin's mom yeah, to come he, back home, he did. <laughs> including running to the old dude." I was like, "Hey, and, and, and uh, John Candy." Yeah. <laughs> I was like, "Is John Candy playing the same character in two movies?" Yeah, he just joined a like a Oompa band or something yeah, while maybe. he was out there. Oh, but it was the man. same old dude. Remember? Yeah, it was the same old dude. <laughs> and remember she was hawking the jewelry yeah. <laughs> oh the little is, dangly jewelry this is good this is good stuff so this movie i actually had some fun watching this one i was pleasantly surprised and and I, 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 I i felt it was very relatable in in many ways because who else has been there the day before a vacation when your boss is like it's 4 55 and oh just like God. or gotta, just before a holiday I man be somewhere yeah <laughs> or it's like you know the night before thanksgiving and you got to drive somewhere or you have to, you know, typically they know they'll let you off. Hey, a little early so you can get ahead of the traffic or go for a flight. And they're like, this is fun. How much jobs do you got left? How much work do you got left? You want to yeah. finish it? Yeah, right. So this Earth. one stars uh, Steve Martin as uh, Neil Page, who is a executive at a cosmetics company who is uh, who is w- one airplane <laughs> ride away from home. From losing his mind. From losing his, well... <laughs> First, it's one airplane ride from home. Then it turns yeah. into one taxi ride, an airplane ride. Then it yeah. turns into a, an airplane ride, ride to, a, to a hotel stay with yeah. with a, some goober. Called Del Griffith. Yeah, Del Griffith, played by John Candy. And John Candy, man, that guy is... Uh, <laughs> I miss is, John Candy. Yeah, man. I was watching this going, John Candy is... Nobody can play John Candy, man. He's so good at what he does. And yeah. I'm a sucker for physical comedy, so this movie was... It was right up my alley. Yeah, I think I remember me yelling a lot in Little Shop of Horrors. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I just watched that movie a couple weeks ago. For the first time or? No, again. Oh, okay. Hey, Seymour. <laughs> <laughs> Feed me, Seymour. Feed, Feed me, Seymour. He was what, a radio Seymour? host in that movie? <laughs> yeah. Oh, blah, 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 blah. I don't remember what he said, but I remember him making noises. <laughs> it was pretty good. He just gets that noise maker. He's like, <laughs> blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I just remember that. <laughs> But, but anyway, so he's uh, so Steve Martin is uh, is an executive at the executive boardroom with a bunch of other executives waiting for their boss at the end of the <laughs> table to make. To, he's like this. Yeah, he has all these papers. If you're watching us on YouTube, we're holding pretend we're holding just cosmetic these, lipstick women. Yeah, these huge boards that are supposed to go in a magazine, and he has three of them. He has to go over, and the, it's just completely silent, humongous table, so eighties, and the guy is just looking at these, going. <gasps> And then silence, and he keeps looking at them. Yeah, and eventually just excuses them, and he's like, "You guys, uh, we'll just pick it up on Monday." <laughs> yeah, after the holiday. <laughs> yeah, everyone's bursting out. They're like, "Why did it take him like six hours to like look at the <laughs> stupid paper?" So he's like, "Well, you better." His buddy's like, "You better hurry because like 
Uh, you're, you're, you're not going to make the six o'clock. You're not going to make the six o'clock. And then he, then he goes in like a taxi rampage uh, and he's fighting oh. Kevin Bacon. <laughs> yeah. Him and Kevin Bacon are having a runoff for a, for, it's an, and it's an eighties runoff. The music going off oh, yeah. all the synth pop. It is so ridiculous. Now, when did people stop wearing the fedoras? Was it the eighties? Cause <laughs> he was, know. cause, uh, Steve Martin was rocking the old school, like eighties look, this a whole proper fedora uh, uh, though. Fifties like look, you know, yeah. he looked like he was like ready to like, he, like he, go to the hop and fight Indiana Jones on a plane yeah. somewhere. <laughs> he was like Dick Tracy, man. Uh, but yeah, so, so he, he was tri- fighting over, uh, this taxi and then he tr- trips over a big trunk. Yes. And then he eventually runs into some other dude and tries to buy his cab off him. Yeah. He and, successfully buys the cab off him. Yeah. But while this is happening, we see that same trunk he fell over mm-hmm. being shoved into the back of the cab and then the cab takes off. Yeah. And just as it takes off uh, right before he does, he opens it up and he starts yelling at the guy in the inside. Yeah. And we see surprise John Candy's face. I don't think we see him yet. No, no. You see surprise John Candy's face for like a split second. Oh, and the door shuts because the cab takes off. Okay. Because that pays off later on. Oh, my God. <laughs> It's so it pays off pretty quickly actually because we get to see a a Steve Martin John Candy stare off in the uh, terminal yeah, at the, the terminal. airport. It was the best. I remember watching this scene and thinking like, wow, they're, they're getting in the airplane pretty fast. I guess like this is like a pretty quick movie. Yeah, uh, but that's for the eighties. They don't do any kind of security checks. You just <laughs> walk right. Oh in. yeah, it was awesome back in the day. Just run right onto your plane. It was awesome. Yeah. Uh, so he runs into John Candy at the terminal. He looks at him. Do I know you? He's like, Do I know you? And then they cut to that scene. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> that whole like you open the the yeah. stall on pooping look. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what it is. <laughs> uh, he's like. Oh. <laughs> that was a good one. Yeah. You know who the Candy's face with a stupid mustache. <laughs> Do you see uh, who the uh, the terminal announcer was? No. Oh, I'm Ben Stein. <laughs> no, it was Ben Stein. <laughs> it was ben Stein. <laughs> oh well, clear eyes. <laughs> clear <laughs> eyes. <laughs> That's so we random. all wear masks, uh, metaphorically speaking. Oh, uh, yeah, so they got on the airplane, and then it's between John Candy and like the old like Mark Twain looking guy from. From home alone. <laughs> he's in the middle and then the guy's like taking off his shoes and being all stinky and weird. Yeah, and because well at this point. So so that you can get in the sense and the mindset of uh, Steve Martin's character is he's already pissed off that he lost his cab. He gets to the airport just in the nick of time. His flight is delayed. So all this angst is building up in him and then his first class seat that he booked months ago is he's taken bumped. Yeah, yeah, so he gets put back in coach and he sat right next to Del Griffith. AKA um, John Candy, John, John Candy, John Candy, an old dude. <laughs> yeah, John Candy, an old dude. John Candy, it's Del Griffith. It's just this dude, larger than life. Takes off his shoes, takes off his socks, and every moment, he, everything he does is just large. Like he takes off his shoe, he's like, oh, oh, that feels better. And he takes off his socks, like, oh, these dogs are barking. <laughs> yeah, that kind of thing. <laughs> and, but. <laughs> I have one line that that John Candy said that absolutely killed me. <laughs> so when the flight got when the when they got delayed, I think uh, John Candy had made a he said a line. <laughs> he said, uh, "You have we'd have better luck playing pickup six with our butt cheeks." <laughs> I couldn't stop laughing, dude. Too bad John Candy can't play uh, <laughs> Peter Griffith in a movie. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> However, he says it. Butt cheeks and pickup sticks. <laughs> <laughs> the worst. Yeah. And then, of course, John Candy's character, Del Griffith, his job is to sell shower curtain rings. Yeah. Like that's a, of course, John Candy does that. Come on. <laughs> and he's lugging this, uh, this, this big. What do you call it? This big uh, trunk chest, everywhere yeah. he's going. Yeah. Uh, so they had to land because uh, I guess they got snowed over, and then they had to stay in a uh, a hotel. Well, he didn't make a. John Candy called ahead and yeah. got a single room for some reason for yep. the both of them, and it just mirrors like this dude who picked him up like a precursor to like Uber, like this is the creepy like dude. Oh who picks yeah, him up playing just like, like random crazy stuff. Yeah, he's like in the super decked out like with like naked pictures in the. I in don't the even cab. remember that. <laughs> yeah. It was like a yeah, it was like a nineteen eighties Celica or something, something crazy where they shouldn't. It's essentially if you've been picked up by a weird sports car in mm-hmm. Uber, this is exactly what it is. Times ten. I think it was like glowing in a head like hydraulics. <laughs> yeah, that's terrible. 
Yeah, and then uh, I don't know how John Candy took a shower and messed up the place so fast. They should have had like a scene of like Steve Martin. It was, uh, that was my one thing I in, needed. In the gym, like, yeah. you know, just kind of like doing something else. But like John Candy like trashed like this, uh, this, this hotel room, used all the towels. Yeah. And then he had his socks like in the sink. I don't know how he wanted to expect those to get dry, by the way, yeah. by the time the night was over. Uh, and some of all this happened while Steve Martin was in the shower, I guess. Yeah, so he's in the shower. He has his face all covered in soap, and then somehow the water turns off. Yeah, the water turns off for a moment, just gets hot. And, by the way, Steve Martin in Marvel shape in 1988. Remember the hell this movie came yeah, out? Man. <laughs> like, for, yeah, man. For for a guy who doesn't age, who's always looked like Steve Martin, man. Yeah, Steve Martin is Steve Martin. Think, I think his face has just gotten a little rounder, but yeah, this movie was in 87. Holy 87, crap. Steve Martin was in Marvel shape. Ready? He was ready to be Bruce Banner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bruce Banner before and after. They need to retcon that role and just give it to him. Yeah, Call him dude. old Hulk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyway, yeah. So he wrecks the the what's his name? Uh, Dell wrecks the bathroom, puts his yeah. socks in the thing. Um, and uh, he also uh, turns on the magic fingers on the bed. Is that still a thing? Oh, the massaging bed. Yeah, yeah. The, the coins. I don't know. What, why? Why did they think why, that was a good why idea? Is that a thing? It I just, think it was. I think I stayed in some motel sixes it, it just, in my youth. It just reminds me of the scene of uh, what is it? Feels very um. <laughs> no, Austin Powers. Do I make you horny, baby? As he spins on the bed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or as the TV cut goes, do I make you randy? <laughs> yeah. This so spinning bed equals vibrating bed to you. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> Yeah, it's that, just as ridiculous. And he had like the beer, and like they didn't show it, but the beer exploded on on Steve Martin at some point, so he had yeah. to sleep in beer. Uh, and then he like got up <laughs> into the bed and just like chewed out Dell for being a terrible person. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, I actually wrote that. I was like, man, thirty minutes in, and John Candy's got us feeling like jackasses. Well, you think what you want about me? I'm not changing. I like I like me. Yeah, and then the guy's like, my wife loves me, my friends love me, and like, I'm a good person, and I like me. He gives him like a, a soliloquy back about he's a good guy, but then like Steve Martin's like, oh, fine. Yeah, and, and he comes while, back the, while he's going off on, so while Jack, while Del Griffin is telling Neil um, what's going on, he's already dressed, ready to leave, and then he starts undressing himself to get, to get ready for bed. So yeah. They end up just laying together, and then another scene. <laughs> The next morning is the funniest. They're, they're like in bed together. Yeah, you have you have John Candy as a big spoon. <laughs> oh, he kisses. He kisses, kisses his ear. He kisses Steve Martin's ear. Steve Martin's like, well, Neil's like, <laughs> it's so much more. You is just it, have to watch. Yeah, it. as they get up and realize what happens, like, how was the game? Yeah, those tigers, man, all the way. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> and he's like. Why did you kiss my ear? He's like, anyway, <laughs> man stuff. Yeah, just like that. <laughs> it didn't quite, didn't quite go that bad, but a few minutes longer, maybe. Um, and and while they were asleep, by the way, some dude broke into their room and stole their money. Yeah, all of their freaking money, man. It was bad. Yeah, I don't know. That was uh that was pretty. Like, he just had like a knife. It's like he goes in there every like every other yeah, night like and steals people's money. Uh, he stole their cash, and then you don't find them in this movie the way they treated credit cards. We'll just write the plastic all the way. Yes, the plastic. Yeah. Oh, card you have? I don't. I have a Nordstrom card, <laughs> and I have a Visa. It's like, dude, I got like thirty credit cards in my pocket right now. <laughs> <laughs> I have some in a drawer. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pick one, anyone. I'm like, I'm like I have them <laughs> digitally one, in my phone now. <laughs> right, one might work. Speaking of phones, this world exists in a world without phones, and which now, was totally like. It was a nice departure watching this, but then it made me realize how inefficient everything is. Yeah, so they so they take the train, but they were uh, they're picked up by this weird hillbilly guy. Yeah, who's got his wife in the car. Yeah, wants he wants his wife to carry their trunks and put it in the back of the truck, and he's like, "Don't worry, she's just been birthing a baby who came out sideways." <laughs> <laughs> and she's a mighty strong woman. It was like whoa, <laughs> sideways, you say. <laughs> <laughs> terrible oh my god yeah then they then they're in the car or no they're, they're in the trunk way uh, on their way to the train station speaking of which there's a dog in the hay like it's, oh, just, yeah. it's just a yeah, bed so, of, a yeah, lot so of hay they're sitting in the back of this truck as they're driving down these cold roads and uh was it steve martin he had forgotten his gloves and he reaches down to see because he sees these gloves just hanging out in the hay as he reaches down this damn australian shepherd just whips out of nowhere yeah <laughs> sticks his fingers off I just realized there's like a creepy like reflection of my head on top of this thing. <laughs> <laughs> you, you guys can't see us if you're listening. 
but uh, we're wearing funny hats. Yeah, I'm wearing a tiny hat, and he's wearing a, a turkey hat. <laughs> yeah, we're, I got turkey legs. <laughs> Where is it? <laughs> the Thanksgiving, they're on their way back home for Thanksgiving, by the way, because yeah. we haven't gotten to that thing. So, yeah, they or they get on the train, and the train breaks down. They made them walk, like, miles to the bus station. Yeah, through, like... At like farmland so so uh, to me uh, this is just steve martin always trying to escape from dale but he can't seem to get away from him they have dinner and he's this part way he's like oh, okay then he keeps running into him again he tried yeah. to get get rid of him on the train but he saw him carrying that big trunk all by himself he felt bad he helped him carry it through the marsh yeah um but uh and they take a bus they take a bus and then they're watching some couple like making out and oh, he's like watch funny. him it's like a, it's like a porno <laughs> it's awesome and then uh then they get sp- well, then Steve Martin's character, Neil, gets spotted by the couple, and they're like, take a picture. It'll last longer. And everyone's well, like, like, ooh, how 80s. <laughs> <laughs> it's a movie. Uh, so then, then, he, then he attempts to rent a car, right? Yes. And then they drop... No, I, I think he's, he's... So he successfully rented a car, but the bus drops him off at the... At the furthest point of the car lot, which yeah. is the farthest place. And then, yeah, I've seen these these car lots, the, the airport areas are so big that like... Oh, yeah. You need a tram. It's like a Disneyland parking lot. And you don't yeah, know where I've, it's at. I've done that before. They're so his huge. car's not there. And he's like, oh, man. So he has to like trek all the way back. And he gets into like, there's a little bit of a baited conversation with the teller who's like just being really happy talking to someone before him. Yeah. Or talking about the holidays. Talking about the holidays. And he's like, he just says a lot. <laughs> yeah. I actually wrote there. I was like, oh, my God. So many F-bombs. Yeah. And it was like every other word was an F word. It was like, I need my fucking car so I can get to my fucking house and I hate your fucking rosy cheeks. And, <laughs> and and he's like, she's like, well, can I see your uh, rental agreement? And he's like, I threw it because I was so mad. She's like, looks like you're fucked. And then scene. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was good. It reminds me of a time before phones again. Yeah. Where, like, well, I was going to say this whole movie is based on what I consider now a minor convenience. I'm like, oh, I got an alert that my thing got canceled look at that kayak i'll I'll get another one yeah right (laughs) and i have done that i've actually like chatted in for a flight and they're like hey your flight changed by the way i'm like this movie is upgraded this movie's like like, watching the flintstones (laughs) flintstones meet the flintstones they're the modern family these people they're, they're and, like they're, and their de- 1980s problems. Yeah, they're like one degree of separation from running why a is, car on their feet. <laughs> <laughs> why is Steve Martin fighting Kevin Bacon? Why don't they just Uber? Yeah. <laughs> why don't they just split an Uber, man? Yeah. <laughs> split the cost. You know what? I was thinking about why don't they split the cab? Someone's got to be going to the airport, too. Yeah. No, I don't know. Yeah, you know, more money for the cabbie, too. Yeah, somebody saw this movie and said, I will invent Uber. I actually think Uber was invented because of Grand Theft Auto. Because <laughs> you're able to call cabs that easily. <laughs> It was it was pretty good. Yeah, uh, yeah. So so the the whole thing, and then he's like mad at everybody at this point. So he's away from Dell. He's just by himself. He's mad yeah. at everybody. So then, well, he leaves the teller. So he leaves the teller and goes outside. Mm-hmm. And he, that's he, when he goes outside trying to catch a bus. And then he just like mean to like oh he's trying to catch another taxi. And then uh, he's like he goes to the taxi guy whoever's like porting the taxis. He's like yeah give me a taxi. Well, where are you going? Chicago. He's like, aren't you aware you're in, um, where was he? Uh, Missouri or Missouri, something? Missouri, yeah. He's like, he's like, he's like, if I wanted to hear a joke, I'd watch you take a piss. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy just gets like all mad and starts getting, he throws him like on the ground or something. Well, no, he punches, he punches Neil square in the nose and Neil falls down. And again, almost like, like when he tripped in the beginning of the movie, Almost had his head run over. Well, now he almost has his head run over by by Dell. By Dell, and uh, Dell's like, "Oh yeah, well, I'll take him from here on. Just help me get him in the car." He's like, "With pleasure." Yeah. And he grabs him by like the balls. <laughs> he literally grabs him by the balls and drags it. Yeah, you don't see it, but I could just imagine they cut a scene where he has like a like a blow up doll with like yeah. <laughs> it's like carrying this like light thing around and just throwing it in the back of the car. It's like if I was another guy, I would have picked you up by your balls or something. <laughs> And then for like the next five minutes, Steve Martin's like, oh, man, I, yes, that really they, hurt. So they make no mention of it, but his voice sounds like he was on helium. Yeah. And for a second, I didn't realize that was him speaking. So when it hit me, I could not control me, my laughter. Do you have any idea how glad I am I didn't kill you? Do you have any idea how glad I'd be if you had? I'm, I'm over here like at 11 o'clock at night just bursting out loud laughing because you're hearing Steve Martin speak in a high-pitched voice for a good her. amount of time, too. Oh my god! <laughs> uh, yeah. 
So so he keeps trying to get back. And then yeah. they're in the they're in the car. Where or is this the this is like the yeah. So then they're now in Dell's rental car. And by the way, so there's this underlying um soundbite that keeps interjecting itself throughout this whole movie because we forgot to mention that Neil says you're messing with the wrong guy when uh, when the cab gets taken by Kevin by not Kevin Bacon by the by, by Dell. Del. So <laughs> throughout this whole movie, when anything physical or anything wrong is going on with uh, with Neil, you hear just a random scratch like er, 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 er. you're messing with the you're messing with the wrong guy. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah, you hear it. Everywhere. I remember hearing the scratching, but I didn't realize it was yeah. like it was like just some jerk like yeah. you're messing with the wrong guy. <laughs> you hear it like interjected. I did hear the I did hear the scratching. <laughs> And yeah. like, man, it's so 80s. Yeah, so you're hearing that, and then if you watch it again, you're hearing you're, you're, mess, you're messing with the wrong guy very low. <laughs> like this. Oh is my the god, best. I gotta go back and watch that. Yeah, now. so every time something wrong happens to Neil, you hear, you're messing with the wrong guy. <laughs> That's pretty funny. <laughs> it was like, come on, John Hughes. That was awesome. I remember they actually made some really good time with the uh in the car. And then I actually do remember I've made this trip before. I've driven from I, I flew to Cleveland, Ohio, and drove to Chicago. From Chicago, I came back around and drove to Endicott, New York, and then New York City, and then back to. Why would you do that? I have friends. Ah, that's mm-hmm. true. Mm-hmm. I hate those drives. Mm-hmm. I, mm-hmm. I, I drove a few times from from California to Colorado. Yeah, that sucked. <laughs> Yeah, so that was Never again. that was uh, that was a lot of fun. So I, I've seen I've seen the country. I drove past Crystal Lake. It's pretty cool. Oh, nice, nice. Yep. Anyway, back to this. You're messing with the wrong guy. <laughs> That's pretty funny. <laughs> so like, so now they have the car. They have the rental car. Making some good time. It looks like. Yeah, really good time. Except for a stupid Dell smoking in the car. <laughs> so <laughs> they sw- no. <laughs> what? What's hilarious is Neil is driving. And Dell says he has a bad back, so he's messing with the electronics of this car because now it's the eighty, you know, late eighties. They got electronic seats, and all oh, you're yeah. seeing is the seat move <laughs> over, <laughs> and it, the camera is fixed on Neil. And all of a sudden, you see Dell's head pop to the side as if electronic seats go to the right or left. Yeah, dude, I lost my mind when this was happening. <laughs> yeah, then they switch sides, and then, and then uh, Neil had is like his head was on the windshield. He's <laughs> yeah. Like I can't drive like this. This is preposterous. Yeah, so you broke this back. seat. Yeah, so he's so now it's his time to rest, and Neil's driving, and Neil puts on this like, like blues kind of bluesy music that like you would expect the the Blues Brothers to be playing while they're driving down or a you polka know, they, band. Yeah, they got a <laughs> what they got a full tank of gas and a half pack of cigarettes, and yeah. they're ready to hit the road. So so that's happening, and then the best physical humor of physical comedy I've ever seen happen happens is. And I'm sure everybody is ever that's ever existed. You get too hot in your car, right? So you try taking off your jacket or coat while you're in your car. Mm-hmm. This is why I take my jacket off now before I enter my car. Yeah, that's a good idea. I do yeah. that. Yeah. So he, that's why that that's why that little hook's there on the arm on the arm. Yeah. It's like hold your jacket. Yeah. So he didn't do that, and he has this thick parka on. He's sitting in the seat trying to drive. He's starting to get hot. So he reaches back with his with his right arm behind him and his. His freaking sleeve gets caught in the lumbar support of his jacket. <laughs> <laughs> he's trying to figure this out, and he's like, "You know what? Screw it!" So he reaches with his left arm, and that one gets stuck in the recliner of the seat. So now he's driving down the highway with like his legs. It's the freaking best. Oh man, you have to see the panic in his face. I don't know dude. why. <laughs> it sounds like you had like a spiritual moment. In this oh part. my god, I actually don't remember the scene. <laughs> <laughs> I remember this movie so vividly. It wow. Was, I enjoyed this movie way too much, man. Well, uh, I think soon. A- I'm not sure how soon after this was the uh, when they got back on the road, which is the, the classic. <laughs> yeah. So so it was actually right after this scene. John Candy freaks out, rips his arm off like a Hulk, and now they <laughs> they slam the brakes on, they flip a U-turn, and come right back onto the road the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this, uh, this scene... Uh, I think single-handedly wrote some jokes in Home Alone. Yeah. <laughs> so they, they get back on the freeway, but they clearly go back on the freeway <laughs> the, the same way they came. And the exit signs the other way around, and then they're they're driving, and then they're they're just going. And then some couple, some happy couple, is just like, "Oh my God, those people are on the wrong side of the road," <laughs> yeah. and you see them like, 
And like, what are these people yelling at? Yeah. I think they want us to roll down the window. They roll on the window and you hear them. You're going the wrong way. And then stupid yeah. John Candy, he's like, how do they know where we're going? Yeah. They must be drunk. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are drunk. Yeah, and you're was going like, the wrong way. And he's like, you're right. You're going the wrong way. Oh, he's drunk. How would he know where we're going? You're right. They don't know where we're going. <laughs> yeah. He's like, he like solidifies it. I'm These like, idiots. <laughs> yeah, how would he know? Thank you. Thanks a lot. They're so drunk. <laughs> and he's like, he's like, sure thing, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, they're going and eventually they get like they're like you're gonna kill somebody you're going to kill somebody <laughs> and these two trucks are coming like oh right at them God. and they've been coming we're seeing this yeah. sometimes wipe to them for like what felt like five minutes <laughs> and they look and they're like ah <laughs> And they scream and go, <laughs> do some fast and furious move between, right between the trucks. The tr- <laughs> and as they're doing this, they both turn into skeletons and scream. Not only that, but when it's happening, so they both took the skeletons and then. then Dale turns into the <laughs> devil. <laughs> God, you gotta see it these crazy flashes. <laughs> yeah, oh. it, it, like I said, that reminds me of Marv when he got electrocuted. <laughs> yeah. He was like, <laughs> it was the best. Oh, and he put the spider on his face. <laughs> oh, oh boy, God, was that so was good. pretty good. It, it, you know, to me, this movie kind of felt like a like a precursor also to Dumb and Dumber because that was a big road trip yeah, movie man. too. Because this is the kind of shenanigans they got into, and you know. It's fun, man. Yeah, this it is was, a good. Ro- I want to see more road trip movies. Yeah, now you know, having watched this movie, I'm like, I will now base most buddy movies off of this one. Yeah, it, it definitely was. I'm surprised I've never seen it before. I've always heard about. I always wanted to see it, and it came to the top of the list of Thanksgiving movies. I'm like, oh, it's Thanksgiving. Yeah, I, we, why we, not? This set just appeared like this. Yeah, we just showed up. We walked in after filming, and it was here. Yeah, I think uh, I think uh, Jose's still. Yeah, he's in the dungeon somewhere, <laughs> and he comes in and he puts dry ice and stuff. And it's he's Halloween. Like, got him, got him. <laughs> <laughs> Except today, he was like, <laughs> <laughs> that's because he took his voice box out. <laughs> <laughs> See if he gets works. it back. <laughs> oh man! So after <laughs> <laughs> that's, the <noise> they, <laughs> that's the noise he makes. <laughs> so after <laughs> this happens, they finally go and uh, you know they finally check into a hotel with this mangled car. <laughs> oh wait, we well, didn't explain how oh. the car got mangled. Like it got it got mangled from that. Yeah. But he was Dell was smoking earlier, and the back seat caught oh, on yeah. fire <laughs> with these pleather seats. <laughs> yeah, the whole thing just went up in in, in smoke, and then that's when they realized. Uh, oh, that's when. Neil found out that he that Dell r- knew that they they switched credit cards, so he actually destroyed all the credit cards and yeah. everything. Oh, knew you stole it. I thought I, you put it there. Why would I put it there? Kindness. Yeah, they were in the car in in Neil's wallet in the glove box. I wonder if this is the last time anyone ever had a diner's card. Yeah, <laughs> stupid man. diner's card. How random is it? How often do you go to diner? Well, I think Diner's card was actually like the first credit card. That's why it lasted so long. Oh, that's probably true. Because you know it was like a whole co- coalition of cards. But anyway, yeah. So they go to the hotel. They don't have any money anymore, or yeah. like any real money, because they got it stolen. And then Dell, he he manages to get hundred bucks by trying to hawk a bunch of yeah. uh, uh, of shower shower, shower rods, shower curtain rod uh, rings rings to different people as yeah, as different things. Look, yeah, like their earrings, their yeah. bracelets. He made people like really want them. Uh, so they had some money, but not much. Uh, but but they were, but uh, Neil was able to coax the guy working there because he had a nice like Rolex watch or whatever. Yeah. He's like, I'll give you a nice watch and fifteen dollars. He's like, all right. He eventually did it, and then <laughs> the, guy, the, the other guy comes like, Do you have a Rolex watch and fifteen dollars? He's like, No, I have two dollars, and I have this, and he like swings it across his arm. This Casio. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, Have a good night. Yeah, <laughs> he shuts him out. So 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 Neil goes in the room by himself, and it's it's a it's two beds, so it's not yeah. the worst thing in the world if he had to share it. But he sees like his buddy uh, uh, Dell on the outside, like mm, in in, <laughs> in, the, in the burnt up, messed up car. By the way, <laughs> like the, the whole the whole top ch- of it is gone. Yeah, it's just all chassis. It's like, a com- like it's like convertible, but like it's all with burnt a roll, out with, yeah, a scoop, with a roll bar. <laughs> yeah, with a scoop out of it. Uh, he's like, oh, fine. And then, then he lets him in the room, and then like they bond for like a moment. So they actually yeah. have like a buddy, like They're just pounding all the little mini liquor bottles. Yeah. Oh man, each one of those is probably like thirty bucks. Yeah. Oof. <laughs> 
Oh uh, yes, yeah, so they become buddies and they 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 come they come out the next morning and they get in the cars. They let's drive away. They go in reverse and plow into the room. <laughs> Dell goes in reverse. He goes yeah. Uh, and he plows in the room and he's like go 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 go. <laughs> And then they managed to drive far enough, and then they got. I remember they were driving seventy eight, and they got pulled over. Yeah, I was thinking, oh my god, stupid cop! Then I was, oh hey, it's what's his name? Oh, hey, it's Michael McKean. Yeah, <laughs> it's it Michael cop. McKean. I was like, holy crap, it is Michael McKean. <laughs> uh, but yeah, they they impounded the car, they took it, and then uh, where how did they keep going from there? Because they took the train, they took the bus. I think I think they just ended up like. Oh, oh! I know what happened. Dell, Dell got a, a a trucker to take him the rest of the way. Oh, right, yeah. It was a. Uh, it was. They, it was they, they had to go in a milk truck. Yeah, they or had a yogurt truck or something. And they had to go in the back. Yeah, because it was cold <laughs> it and they're freezing. Was freezing. Beach walking, huh? Uh, and then they managed to make it back to Chicago, both of them together. And then yeah. uh, Neil's like, oh, I guess this is me. And he gets on the the train. He's like, Oh, I'll see you. Like when I see you, buddy. And then he realizes, like he. Uh, he was like, like thinking back to all the good times. Yeah, he's, like, like, reminiscing. <laughs> yeah, he's like reminiscing about his family. Then like interjected thoughts of him and Dell having a great time. And then uh, then he realizes like, wait, he said he's never been home in three years. Yeah. And then he's like, but didn't he say he had a wife? Yeah. And then he's like, oh, wait a minute. Like I should go back and like talk to him yeah. again. He's like, and he, t- um, he gets on the next train. He comes back Q- around. Q80 soft music. A yeah. La John Hughes. 80 John Hughes montage music. Yeah. Um, And then he's like, Dell, where, where, did, where is your home? He's like, my wife's been dead for like three years. No, he said, my wife's been dead for eight years. Eight years. Oh, wow. I'm like, whoa. Marie's been dead for eight years. Yeah. Wow. So like, that's, that's a bummer. That's before I was born. Yeah. <laughs> Same. <laughs> and I'm an old dude now. <laughs> How the hell did that happen? <laughs> fathom events. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> we'll get into um, fathom events. So, so that happens, and uh, so he brings him. He says, "You coming home with me to the to the home alone house?" Yeah, to the home alone house. Uh, <laughs> and his wife sees him, and you know they're all happy and all this stuff. And then home alone began. Yeah, no, I was kidding. <laughs> I think she. I was thinking she divorced him after that. She thinks they had like some sort of weird escapade together. <laughs> Oh, and then, then the McAllisters moved in the following <laughs> season, and, oh, and then and then had Kevin, <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Bacon. <laughs> oh wow, <laughs> that's who he was named after. Oh man, whoa. <laughs> yeah, so you know it was a fun movie. Yeah, it was good. It was man. a good ride. It, it's not a. It's not a. Uh, definitely not a movie for the whole family, which is no. <laughs> But it was a, it was definitely the adult family. Yes. Yeah. So I guess that's good for Thanksgiving because maybe there's more drinking going on. Yeah. If you're, if you're a bunch of adults around, you just put this movie in the background. Sometimes you might hear a laugh here and there. It's if you sit down and watch it, it's a fun one. And by the way, they're just like uh, Ferris Bueller. This movie also has a post credit sequence yes. and it ends uh, clearly after Thanksgiving with yep. that same boss dude looking at the same papers with a with an uneaten turkey next to him. Yep. Just, just looking still at it still like, unable to make a decision. Yeah. Just a perfectly prepared turkey right behind him. <laughs> so it just alludes that he's been sitting there the whole weekend trying to figure out which ad campaign to go with. It was good. Uh, but uh, you know, uh, we what we saw this, we saw Ghostbusters, another '80s movie. So that's actually two '80s movies in a row. There, '80s are doing good, man. And we saw Ghostbusters Afterlife. Yes, we did. So I, I like to call this a bit of a sandwich here. Yeah. So so here's the thing, though. Like, you ever notice how the filmmaking is like so much different? Yes. How, how it they, is they polarizing? They, they let like the scene like go for a moment in yeah. like in the, like old movies. And I and I get in the old days they used to have to cut the film. Yeah. So a real take actually had to like take. Yeah. Then you cut and then you have to like sync it all back up again. Mm-hmm. Um so you had to be like on your guard. Yeah. Whereas now everything is digitally directed and and you can add so much crap in post. Yeah. <laughs> you know it like the actual cinematography of it like is all done in green screen now. Whereas uh just quiet moments, long takes, very character driven. Yeah, and then like if these characters have great like uh what is it chemistry they make these scenes work even better i, I feel like it adds more nuance yeah, to the movie yeah and i think uh uh steve martin and uh, john candy are uh the greats you know they're yeah. they're, they're they they are they're icons yeah and the comedy in this movie isn't just out there it's not just like hey here's it's, a comedic moment it's like you have to watch it and you're like 
holy crap, this is funny. It is up to you to find it funny, which if you see them on the screen, you will find it funny. <laughs> and, and it's grounded in reality. It's not, it's not weightless uh, yeah. polygons. Yeah, like you really do feel, you feel for these characters. You, f- you feel the, the angst that, you know, Neil is experiencing. Then you feel like the craziness that, uh, what is it, Dell is experiencing. It's not like uh, Melissa McCarthy with a uh, proton pack. It's blasting fly- off blasting into the nether. And flying back and forth like a, like a fireman who can't control their hose. <laughs> wow, that really sucked. Well, anyway, uh, yeah, so I, I think we're going to give these some turkeys. So why don't you go yeah. first? I will give this one five out of five turkeys. <laughs> I said in what I will call the best Thanksgiving movie ever made, John Hughes delivers yet another fun, entertaining, and heartfelt movie. The late John Candy and Steve Martin have set the basis upon which I will grade all buddy comedies. Watch this one, folks. It's going to pull you in the best directions. And yes, it holds up. Well, I'm going to give it a four turkeys. <laughs> I say it's a fun Thanksgiving joyride that stands up well enough. It's a little dated, but it's nice to see Steve Martin and John Candy work together. Not quite a fun for the whole family affair, but I guess that's why they made Home Alone. Oh. <laughs> Kevin Bacon! <laughs> They actually, it was fun because I don't even know how old Kevin Bacon was, but he clearly was like Kevin Bacon. Like, yeah, he could have been Kevin. Kevin Bacon as Baconist. <laughs> super, <laughs> super eighties Kevin Bacon. Right, expected after. him to go foot loose. <laughs> Do you know what? Uh, where Kevin, one of Kevin Bacon's first movies was? Which one? Uh, he was uh, one of like the early kills in Friday the Thirteenth. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. He got murdered there. His bacon got cooked. I wonder. If we if it, the next Friday Thirteenth, we should do a Friday the Thirteenth movie. I'm game. But anyway. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving. Enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Be merry. Eat. Mm -hmm. Drink like a pirate. Yeah, hopefully. Have a good time. Hopefully. uh, Don't drive, though. Yeah, don't don't drink and drive. And uh, don't uh, go to sleep after you eat. Yeah. Don't go do something crazy. Fall asleep on a couch. Yeah, that's what I was going to (laughs) say. Pass out on that couch. That couch is is, is, uh, good for the couching. Yeah. I just saw that weird (laughs) reflection of me again. (laughs) Ah. These things are going wild. Your turkey balls are, are dangling. <laughs> uh, but anyway, remember to like, share, subscribe. Hit that bell notification. Uh, do what you can. Hide your kids. Hide your wife. Uh, all that stuff. Go sit in the corner and listen to us. Sit in the Rate corner us, listen please. to us. Or, or just go on YouTube and play our videos and then yeah. let it run. Yeah, you night. know what? For Thanksgiving, go and create a playlist with all of our videos and just click play and just watch them all through. Go on our channel. We have review playlists. They can do that too. There you go. And then, uh, hey, we reviewed the entire (laughs) season of Loki for some reason. Yeah. Watch that. Watch that. (laughs) What was happening there? (laughs) Right. (laughs) Anyway, I'm your host, Mark Robocava for Mr. A.O. Panetta for Clubhouse Movies Podcast. We have just had our Thanksgiving special. (laughs) We will catch you next time.